Hey guys, it's MJ, the student tech tree, and in this video, we're going to be talking about capital markets. And surprise, surprise, capital markets are a form of market. And like most markets, you enter them in order to trade. Now, what can you trade? Well, you can buy or sell debt and equity. And the time span for these securities is generally long term, as this type of capital is used for investments. If you're looking to meet uh, operating expenses and other short-term commitments, then you would look at the money market and not the capital market. Now, capital markets and money markets are known as financial markets. And in case you were wondering, um, other types of financial markets are commodity, derivative, insurance, and foreign exchange markets. And there's actually a few other ones. And these markets form part of the financial economy. And what are capital markets made out of? Well, there's various parties. There's buyers, sellers, regulators, and analysts. And then there's the systems, electronic platforms, trading floors, and the rules and regulations. And we have two main types of capital markets. We have the stock market and we have the bond market. The stock market is used to trade public equity and the bond market is used to trade public debt. And we also get uh, primary and secondary markets. Um, the primary market, this is mainly between the lender and the borrower, or between the company and the investor. It is the original release of the security. And then we have the secondary market, which is between investors and between lenders. And it provides an escape route for the initial buyer. And this makes markets more attractive as it lets them get out. And the technical word for this is liquidity. Now, capital markets can be regulated to prevent fraud and ensure fair, fair trading. But too much regulation can slow the market down and cause inefficiencies. Uh, capital markets can also be analyzed to determine which securities to buy or sell. And finally, I want to talk about how capital markets provide information for financial managers. Um, the cost of capital. This is one of the key pieces of information they provide. You know, what do investors want in return? And financial managers can also use this as a starting point for their projects um, and project appraisals. They also get information of the supply. You know, how limited is the supply? Is the economy in a recession? Or are there a lot of investors seeking to invest? You know, is there a surplus? Um, it also provides information with regards to mergers and acquisitions. You know, is my share price too low so that I'm vulnerable for a takeover? Or is my competitor's share price tra trading at such a price that makes it desirable to acquire them? And finally, um, I want to look at how you know, the capital markets provide information on performance. If my share price is increasing, it means my financial managers and my employees are doing a good job. If the share price is decreasing, maybe I need to replace them. Although this isn't the best measure as a stock price is correlated with the general market and this needs to be considered before making a decision. But now that we've gone very quickly through the theory, uh, let's ask you guys a question. If interest rates were to suddenly decrease, would you rather raise your capital through the stock market or the bond market? Now I've put this for 10 marks because there's a lot that you can say on it. And it's going to be difficult to score full marks and this is generally a question that you would come across in CA1 but have a go and yeah, try your best in answering it in the comment section below. Now you may have noticed um, what these things are. They've been at the bottom uh, right hand corner of the various slides. Now there are symbols that I've created for my new study method uh, which I'm currently working on. Basically, it uses semantic relationships from artificial intelligence to organize information in the most efficient way so that it's best and easily understood by students. I'm still working on it, but uh, this video was built on its framework, so I hope you enjoyed it. And that's actually why it was quite short, because I just focused on the key relationships. And it's pretty cool as, it's, you know, as this artificial method is designed to work for any subject. And I think it makes sense. I mean, I'm taking the rules and logic that a machine uses to become intelligent and saying, hey, why don't we also use them to make people intelligent? So this is the, the end product of using the, the study method. You'd have like a diagram like this. 
and the end goal is to interconnect all the concepts of a particular subject and create a global brain or otherwise known as a knowledge network and then write programs that can then you know use it and have a, a more valuable search engine over it but I'll make a I'll make a dedicated video to explain all of this um, for now just try answering the question in the comment section below and use that diagram that I showed you try try when you structure your answer focus on each thing so talk about financial markets the economy the various people in uh, that make up capital markets and how interest rate um, relates to all of those people and you should have enough points then to create a, a good yeah, a good answer that is worthy of 10 marks but you guys thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos cheers